Haha, <laughs> 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 that looks really cute. Oh, I love it! Welcome to the Photography Podcast with your host, Mike Cassidy. Hey, how are you, everybody? My name is Mike Cassidy, and I'm a boudoir photographer from New Jersey, and this is my show. What I do is talk with people who are just starting out on their photography voyages, as well as established pros to learn about the hurdles they've had to overcome to get their businesses going. I'm looking to bring you personal stories, which will help you connect to the fact that you're not alone in your struggles. Along the way, we'll probably have a few laughs, but the goal is to get you some actionable advice to help your business grow. So stay tuned. You never know what you may learn. Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. My name is Michael, and I'm your neighbor. Welcome to March. I had a little bit of a, of a break uh, the first couple of weeks, so what have I been up to? Well, I've been working on my beach photography website and getting it ready for this upcoming summer and putting some photos, some photos I took last summer, uh, up, updating my galleries and tidying things up on that website a little bit because before you know it, summer is going to be here again and very strange business beach photography. It's like boom, 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 just like few short weeks in the summer all these people descend on the jersey shore for these family vacations out of the blue it's like the short frantic demand for beach photos and the calendar flips to september and everybody vanishes it's very very strange you know the weather is still warm and beautiful but there's just nobody around or the week before there was like tons of people here it's a it's a strange scene man Someone flips on the lights and all these people scatter like roaches. It's, you know, but it's fun to do that for that short time. But let's get back to talking about websites a little bit. You know, as a photographer, your website is part of your job. Your website is your storefront. Updating content is part of your job. You've got to keep updating images. And browsing around, the number one thing I see missing on people's websites is like their location. It's very strange. You know, great, you're a family photographer, but like, where the hell are you located? Colorado? I don't, I don't know. Just, you don't put your location anywhere. It's a little odd. So just make sure you have your location on your website where you're working from. You know, and website takes a few hours a month probably to keep it updated and do whatever maintenance you have to do on there and you got to do it i mean that's not even to mention blogging which is a whole another episode of stuff going on you know so you got to keep stay in there and keep your content fresh because it will pay dividends for you and your appearance is everything it's all people see about you you know so that's an, it's important i know it's expensive to hire a web guy you know but if you can't do that yourself you really gotta you gotta do it. it it pays dividends and what else is going on i have uh way too many sessions scheduled for this spring so far i'm sitting here in the quiet before the storm i have a bunch of brides and i have uh a bunch of like uh, bff sessions i do these sessions where two friends come in and they share a session together so that started that a couple years ago and now that's a thing and that's fine with me because uh, it's like killing two birds with one stone two people two women come in and i get to do that so i have a couple of these friend sessions booked and i'm going crazy now up through, through june you know so that's about it for um now and as far as me go so what else is going on well if you have any questions about this show or you want to reach out and send me an email, you can hit me at uh, mike at mikecassidyphotography.com. And for more information on any of the guests or these episodes, you can visit the website at the, the photography show, and you'll see all further details and photos and stuff on there about our guests. But anyway, uh, my guest today is Diana Lehman. She's a super boudoir photographer from Wilmington, North Carolina, and we had a good old general conversation uh, a couple weeks ago. We were 
talking about how boudoir photographers like had to learn and how to get their start in the days before the internet really became a thing and there was this abundance of information. She also has to deal with a little bit of a conservative clientele, so we covered that a little bit, and we also talked a bit about how to find the right balance between uh, you and pushing your client a little bit, you know, how to push them just a little bit to bring in a little bit of excitement to their session. So it's a lot of good stuff in this episode, and uh, I'll shut up now and uh, give it a listen, and I will uh, talk to you next time. Thanks. And you are on, Dana. You're live now. And I had a cute picture. I was good, and I, they took it out of here. I wanted to share, and it was just your latest Instagram picture. And I was going to say the one you're sitting on the couch with the official Instagrammer, two hands on the coffee mug, looking very happy. <laughs> so now you're officially an influencer when you hold a a cup of coffee like that. It means you've arrived. You're right. Where That's it's what everybody at. does. And I, you're just very relaxed, very happy. I was going to say, boy, look at you. You're just like so smiley and so happy. And I was like, boy, I don't kind of look that happy when I'm sitting on my couch. But uh, nice to have you on. Thanks for taking the time to um, uh, talk with me. And, you know, lately this has been a lot of fun to do talking about people and mostly boudoir photographers I talk to, but it's been a little bit of of everything. So uh, we'll cover a little bit of uh, ground here as far as... uh, how you got started and and so forth. So first of all, just take a moment to introduce yourself. Well, my name is Dana Lehman. I am based in Wilmington, North Carolina. So beautiful beach town. I love it here. And I have been here for about 15 years now and been shooting or doing photography, gosh, almost that long. Um, I mean, I've been doing it ever since I was in college, interned with a wedding videography or videographer when I was uh, maybe my senior year of college, and then just kind of took off from there. Um, I went into corporate America for a little bit, but was really grateful for that time. I learned a lot, but still always had the bug for photography, could not get rid of it, always knew that's what I wanted to do. Just trying to figure out how to make that happen um, as a living, especially, and took photography classes whenever I could, and did wedding photography initially, and then found my way into boudoir photography, which I also always knew I wanted to do, just didn't know how to get there. Right. Um, And so that's what I'm doing today. I'm a full time boudoir photographer. Um, I've been married for, gosh, 12 years. Now we just had our first little girl um, in April. Thank you. So Welcome she's definitely sleep. added some sleep interesting, yes, yeah, some interesting things to the mix. Um, been trying to figure out how to balance work and motherhood and marriage, but it's been really good. Um, thankfully, my studio, which um, I'm talking to you from right now, is at my house. So don't have to go too far and can work from home. So that's a blessing. But yeah, I'm shooting boudoir now and trying to be a mom and do all the things. Keeping it all together. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things where you mentioned that you wanted to talk about a little bit is making that jump. And we'll get into that a little bit um, in the future. Um, But one thing I like to do with everybody is we're going to go back in time, Dana. (laughs) Oops, I hit the wrong button on my thing. (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing. We didn't want laughs. We'll take uh, it. I'll edit that. And we can't stop it. It was supposed to be my nice harp. And now it's not stopping. Oop, there it goes. Cut that out. We'll fix that in the afterwards. <laughs> so we're going back in time. So that's Uh-oh. the sound of us going back. Going back in time. And so go back to, you said initially you had some idea, but you wanted to get into photography when you were in school. And so how did you make that jump or what was the approach where you said, ha, this is something I want to get a little bit more involved in. And you said you went right into the wedding photography business. How did that come about initially? So I have this weird, strong left brain, but really a strong right brain as well. And I'm a risk taker, but I'm not a risk taker. I'm creative, but I'm really type A. So it's kind of a hard thing to work through um, as an entrepreneur, but I wanted to play it 
safe and went to school here in Wilmington for business. Um, thought that was a safe thing to do. You know, got to make a living, got to do what everybody expects you to kind of do. But I had always grown up doing photography. My mom was a photographer on the side, oh, really? always took pictures. I always had a camera growing up. My first one was like this little um, Mickey Mouse teeny tiny camera that I probably got from Disneyland or Disney World. I think World. I know that camera, yeah. Yeah, just old school <laughs> film camera. And I just remember shooting from that day, like loved it. Um, always watched my mom take pictures and just thought that was a lot of fun. I just loved kind of capturing life in those moments um, growing That's up. It's a long history. This was not something it's that a, yeah, was, yeah. woke up one morning you and like, boy, this is something I'm going to do. You had been doing it pretty much your entire life or a long time yes, up yes. To, that, to that point. And so when you were mentioned getting out of school, um, that wasn't what you did first, though. You decided you need to go and work in corporate USA. Yeah. So there were kind of a lot of things playing to that. So I got married right out of school and, you know, we wanted a place to live. We thought we needed to get good jobs and, and start money a family. Is important because bills have money is important. I know. Um, so I used that business degree and went into corporate America into HR and um, did that for a few years. Uh, I learned a lot from that. You know, it was helpful that I worked for a big company and definitely met a lot of people. Mm. So that helped for sure. Um, but like I said, my senior year in college, I interned and it was actually a business internship for a wedding videographer here in town. And that was super helpful because that was the first time I had seen somebody in that like creative space make a living at something fun and creative and something that was her passion and was like, wow, this is possible. She was shooting weddings um, in the area. And I just thought she's doing it. I mean, she was hustling. She was doing all the things. It was kind of one of those pullback curtain moments where you're like, she seems like she has it all together. She has this website, but at her house, she was just scrapping it, you know, making it yeah. work, yeah. but she was doing it and she loved it. And I thought that was, you wanted a piece just of really eye part opening. Of that. Yeah. You wanted yeah. to be part and of that. Was there a job ad or some, how did you come across uh, that or did you just randomly come across her or don't you even remember? Gosh, I feel like it was through our, um, our college kind of job board, online wow. job board. And there was, you know, inter internships listed on there and that's how I found her. And I thought, wow, this is sort of the creative area that I want to be in, but I can pass it off as a management internship. And so that's what I did. And thankfully, she even asked me to start shooting weddings with her. She was like, do you want to shoot weddings um, while I'm there with her? And I'm looking to add uh, photography into my business, actually, and see if this is something I want to offer. Um, and would you want to kind of try it out with me? And that So was you like, became her yes. photographer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I had done also mentioning like not being able to shake the bug. Um, besides doing like the business school thing, I was like, well, let me try out all the photography classes I can. So I tried to take a bunch of classes here in Wilmington, anything that I could find. And it wasn't a lot, especially, you know, 12, 15 years ago. And so I ended up doing summer sessions at Parsons School of Design in New York because that was... That's a long way to go. <laughs> it was. It was. But I thought, it's a summer semester. I could knock it out, see if it's something I really liked. I learned a lot. Um, and that was really helpful. So just doing little things like that to kind of kind of flush out if this is something I really wanted to do. Um, it was still film at the time. So mm, digital right. hadn't really come around. I mean, because the first few weddings I shot were film. Um, and so that was interesting. But yeah, I mean, I just, you know, it was a passion. I didn't want right. to let it go. So it was just constantly exploring. You worked hard for it, yeah. And then when you yeah. got in there, you realized you you liked it. So uh, how long did that last? Or how long were you shooting weddings for at that point? So when I started shooting weddings, the I was still shooting for a year or two with the wedding videographer. Um, she took me on, which was great as her 
um, kind of photographer for the business. And then after two years, she ended up moving to L.A. And so I thought this is a great time to sort of spin off and start my own business because I had had experience through her. Through her, yeah. Yeah, and kind of knew the ins and outs and felt like I could just start my own business. And that was 2009. Don't um, go back in time now. I have to yeah. play the harp sound again. Where we were we all lost. <laughs> go back. And, uh, but that was also right after I graduated. And so mm. I still took the corporate job, but was shooting weddings on the side. Part time. Yeah. Well, it's a good part time job. Now, that's also, too, it's, it's, it's very specific. You have to know all those shots. And, and did you know anything about the wedding poses or so? Did she school you in that? Did she give you an education on we have to do this pose, this pose? You have to get the bride doing this. And was there kind of a shot list? And you were like, OK, I can handle this. Or did you walk in there more just like taking whatever pictures and kind of crossing your fingers and hoping that you got what you needed? Yeah, I kind of knew, but she did help a lot. Having shadowed her when she was doing weddings for a video at the time, that helped a lot. But yeah, she was, you know, shooting video when I was there shooting photo. And so she was right there along to help. Yeah. yeah, we sort of, you know, you had the same goal in mind, photographer, videographer. So we were there together shooting a lot. And she definitely took me by the reins. And helped me with that. And then when online courses started becoming a thing, I was really diving into that and trying to learn that way too. Yeah, and that's a that's an interesting thing because um, you know I had started in the uh, in the late nineties myself, and I guess at that time the internet was new. There wasn't a YouTube. There wasn't a lot of places to go online. I think now you, every time you turn around, there's an expert here, there's an expert there trying to tell you how to do your business. So I think well, obviously it was tougher because you had to kind of find your own way and it was a little bit more difficult to uh, uh, to learn at at that part. And so how long did you wind up lasting there doing the wedding before you made the, the switch? I shot weddings for, gosh, seven Eight years, we'll say eight. That's a long I was time. in corporate yeah. America for about five and a half. So I shot weddings full time two years after that. And then, um, you know, wanted to start thinking about having a family. And I just didn't see that happening when I was working, working and traveling so every weekend. Exactly. Um, and just so busy. And so I knew I wanted to change that. And definitely talked to my husband many times about it. How can we make this work? What do we think this looks like? Where do we want to go from here? Um, and I sort of just spent a year really building up that side of my business. And it was nice working with brides because those are a lot of my clients now anyways. And getting the word out and taking that year to kind of pivot over and then just made the cut. It was my website for boudoir went live Valentine's Day. Mm, I don't even know, three or four years ago now. Um, but yeah, never looked back, never been happier. I Don't knew it was it. what I wanted to do for so long, but when the word boudoir doesn't even exist back then and you don't mm. have kind of a name to put to yeah. it, yeah, it you was don't just... know right. what you don't know really. Right. So and then you tr made that transition. And uh, what was that like? Just stopping work like one day deciding that, you know, all right, boss, uh, good news, bad news, bad news for you is I'm not coming in anymore. Good news is I think I'm going to be a lot happier doing what I'm doing. So what was that that transition like or or what kind of decision process goes into that? Because it's an important one. It's rough to do that. Yeah, I would call it scary exciting. Right. It was a good scary. And I think that was the sign that I knew I was doing the right thing and what I really wanted to do for so long. Um, weddings are fun and I enjoyed them, but there was always this, um, you know, level of stress there that I don't think was healthy for me and I don't think was like a good stress. And I knew switching over to boudoir, the stress was there, but it was a good stress. It wasn't too much. And it was a uh, scary, exciting. I mean, I was excited to do it. I knew I wouldn't mind putting in the work to make it happen. Right. And I had never really felt that way before. And you knew you were, you're, that was something you want to switch to. Okay, so let's fast forward a couple weeks or a couple months, maybe in your case. And now you're, you're, you're shooting women 
And so you're like, okay, what do I do now? And did you just start advertising for that? Or did you already have some women from your wedding business and you kind of said, Psst, come over this way, I'm going to start doing this. So did you have some people already kind of in your, in your funnel to get you started? Well, it definitely helped having been in the wedding industry and then having a circle of people I knew from my corporate job. So it was a matter of, you know, putting the word out to all my wedding vendor friends, letting them know this is what I was doing now. I would love to work with their brides if they know anybody that was interested, you know, to definitely spread the word, did as much networking as I could in that area. And then it just kind of branched out into other businesses that I thought would align with my business. So if there were spas in the area, you hit um, them up for a referral. Yeah. Some lingerie stores, you just sort Mm -hmm. of make partnerships and relationships um, with them. Definitely the hair and makeup artists, since they play a big part um, in what I do. And it was just building upon that just in a different way, you know, the yeah, right. wedding well, vendors are makeup huge artists. They're, that's a big part of the wedding uh, industry too, because that brides and makeup artists, that's a whole team together. So I guess you met some people from the wedding days that were working in the, uh, in the makeup industry, because it's really important to have good makeup artists and in, in boudoir, because that's a big part of it. That whole makeover to that's, I think the foundation of making people feel like, Oh, this is a new me or I never look like this. Uh, so that's an, uh, that's important, I think, personally, in 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 doing women's photography. So, uh, um, knowing some of those folks, so that's a good starting point. Uh, I, I don't know if you would agree or not with that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I've worked with quite a few of the hair and makeup artists in town, um, and I think with any boudoir photographer, you're super picky about you know your hair and makeup and the look that you want your clients to mm-hmm. have, and you want them to feel comfortable. So I do um, have a few that I work with in particular that I love and just having worked with them before, especially on weddings, you know, it was a big help to see how they talk to clients and work with brides and make them feel comfortable, but then especially their work and uh, does it align with what you want? That's right, because not only is a makeup person there to do makeup, but they also have to be this calming force because they're usually the first person that they meet walking through the door. So not only are they doing the makeup, but they have to be, everything's going to be okay. You're going to make it all right. So it's more than just makeup. So you need someone who's also a good like psychologist. And I found that not everybody everybody can do that. So they need to be that that foundation for uh uh for your customers too because they they're setting you off in a direction and then they got to uh uh understand that and, and that not everybody so uh, not everybody does so yeah that's that's super important for uh uh, for makeup people. So going to keep you right in this, in this time frame, And it's always a fun question to ask people if they remember like their first boudoir session that they did and how bad was it? How did that, <laughs> do you remember anything about that? That it's all right. <sighs> you can let it out now, Dana. You're just with friends now. So. Yeah. Um, gosh, if I'm, well, so there's two instances and they weren't horrible. One is more funny. I mean, to say that I knew that this is what I wanted to do, even though the word boudoir didn't really exist, um, goes back to when I was in high school and I would get my younger sister to like pose for you, dress up and mm-hmm. just put on not lingerie. We were, you know, 15, but just put on like a bathing suit and a lace kimono or a fur jacket and we would just be. <laughs> On vacation somewhere. Yeah, and I would just make her model for me all the time. I didn't know why. I didn't know what I was necessarily going for, but I knew that that's what I wanted to shoot. And I thought, you know, maybe I could shoot for Victoria's Secret one day. Maybe I'll shoot for Sports Illustrated one day. Uh, Because that was really, you know, fashion. And then those routes was kind of the only thing out there. Because there wasn't uh, anything else. That's the only direction that that kind of went in. At yeah. Kind of model just, type work. Yeah. Exactly. So I just thought, you know, I'll work for Victoria's Secret or do something, you know, like that one day. Um, so that was always fun. Love to pull those pictures back out. She'd probably kill me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then professionally, I was in our first house um, when we got married and We had a split floor plan, which worked really well. So our bedroom was on one side, and then I used the other two bedrooms on the other side of the house as my office and studio. 
And I just had my brides, you know, just started asking them, this is something I really want to do. Would you, you know, let me do a session for you? And they would come over and it was um, girls that I knew from my corporate days that I worked Mm -hmm. with that I thought, you know, would be really fun and would like to do it. And then a couple of them were my brides at the time um, who I thought would be interested and just started doing that to build my portfolio. And uh, those pictures are funny too. (laughs) We all have to start somewhere. And I think uh, it it just, it's, I like to ask that, that, that question to people or, or sort of get their uh, uh, the details from that because it's not easy and it takes a lot of work to learn how to work with women, I think, successfully, especially if you're going to start having people hand money over if you've never done that before. And I think the point being is allow now a lot of people say, ooh, I'm going to start doing women's photography, go on Amazon, buy camera. Now I'm a pro. I'm going to start, I'm going to start charging people, but it's a, it's one of the more difficult things to do. And I don't think anybody starts off being an an ace at it. It's a, it's a long learning path. And, you know, you bring those first people in and, uh, and I know I had no idea what I was doing and you're trying to figure it out along and then you get a little bit more comfortable as you get along. And, and what I did was kind of, okay, I'm just going to learn how to do one thing really well first and then add on another pose and maybe a third pose and do it little by little. But I, and all my, unfortunately, my, all my beginning photos are all long, long gone from computer crashes and viruses. Mm. And so thankfully I, 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 <laughs> that might be a good thing. I, I don't have to go back and, and look at them, but I know it wasn't anything like if I did look at them now, I'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe I actually, you know, it's a, it's a long journey from here to there. Um, but it is hard to do. So that's why I think a lot of people, it's interesting to hear their story. And, and a lot of people are like, yeah, it was a nightmare, but somehow, you know, everyone's got to start from, um, from somewhere. Um, so did you have a lot of that sort of like, just, all right, I really don't know what I'm doing, but you're keeping up like a, a, a face of where, oh yeah, don't worry about this. This is going to turn out fine. So did you have like uh, a plan or did you just jump right in and cross your fingers and, and kind of, uh, or you, were you charging these women or were they coming in just volunteering, which I guess makes it easier. Yeah, I think the first few times, maybe the first year when I, you know, wasn't quote unquote offering it as a service, just to kind of build my portfolio. I just had Practice. them come in. I said, bring, you know, some outfits. We'll just play around. Um, I did bring in, actually, the first few I didn't even have hair and makeup. And looking back at that, I think, wow, what a difference, you know, that would have made, you know, in their experience and then be in the images. But, um, posing, I always kind of felt really comfortable with, but it was more about, um, being comfortable with myself, knowing what I was doing, offering that great experience, getting them mm. to feel comfortable. And so I think that only comes with time and experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was fun. Like even from you had a good time. those yeah. sessions, yeah, I knew that I wanted to do more of that. So even though, of course, for everybody, it's sort of awkward and you stumble through it as with anything you kind of do for the first time. But I was hooked after that. I really and was. We're having fun because it can be because sometimes when you're suddenly realize you're sitting in there in the room with a woman and she doesn't know what's going. So she's looking at you like mm-hmm. you're supposed to know everything that's that's happening. And you're just like, OK, what do I do next? So it can be you know, because I think if you start to get the sense that you don't know what you're doing, they're like, oh, I don't know what's going on here. And and and, and boudoir is all about creating that sense of, you know, they have to be relaxed. And, and, and that and I think otherwise you get that. Yeah, you get that weird look in their face and things don't <laughs> uh, kind of uh, go the way that you, you think. So it does take a little bit of practice to to do this. And it's also you mentioned working at home, which is great. Um, because also too, having buildings and stuff is expensive and, uh, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of extra, I know up here in the the Northeast renting space is a small fortune. It's not inexpensive to do. So working, I used to work for my, uh, um, from home all the time and and bring people in on a giant slider in my one bedroom and it was plenty of light. And and I kind of made that room up like you did. And I think a lot of Mm -hmm. people start that way and you work with what you have and, and that's great. You make do with the space that you, uh, um, that you have there. And then what sort of came next after you stumbled through your first few people? Did you sit back and say, hmm, there may be something to this? And then what did you do from there? Yeah, I mean, in my, you know, pricing guys and my offerings and on my website, I just started offering it as a service, you know, let my brides know that that was something they could hire me for. And it 
took off pretty quickly. I mean, because I was, um, even though I was working full time in corporate America, I was working full time as a wedding photographer. So I, you know, had 25 weddings. Jobs. Yeah. And so I had a lot of clients to sort of reach out to and help spread the word. And so, you know, a couple would do it here and then a couple more. And it was um, definitely helpful with word of mouth to kind of get their friends in doing it. And um, I just kind of went from there. And your first people were mostly brides. So that's how you did it. Word of mouth from the Yeah, from the photography brides and just a couple coworkers. So thankfully mm-hmm. I knew them um, and that, you know, made it a lot easier to kind of learn from those first few sessions. They knew it was a learning experience. Yeah. So they were working me. with, yeah, exactly. They were a little bit more and forgiving and they let you experiment. A exactly. Little bit. Yeah. Uh, we were, they both knew we were just going to have fun and try this out. And since they were getting a service for free, they were very gracious. Um, and it was new to everybody at the time so long ago. And so they really had nothing to compare it to, I would say. Right. Yeah. And so each session got better. I mean, you just practice, practice, practice and keep bringing people in and trying different outfits and poses and learning. And that's what I wanted to do. Like, I just wanted to keep getting better, especially knowing this is something I wanted to do full time, at least, you know, offering it to the clients I had. And so it was just kind of building from there. And there, And you mentioned practice and see, this is where I'm one of these maniacal type people obsessives where you have to learn something. And I've, I've told this story before in other shows, but when I was more or less just friends of friends at first for me too, you know, I was doing some pictures and then she goes, Oh, my friend liked them. Will you do them for her? And I'm like, I don't know. And, and, but I would obsess with that. All right. The first time someone offered me money, I'm like, I'm, they're giving me money. I better know what the hell I'm doing because you know, I don't, at that point you're still like, I really don't know what's going on. So I would study, and this is just when the internet and Flickr, and I would look at other people's pictures and go, oh my God, how can I do this? And I actually had mannequins. I had, and I would lay these mannequins out and practice, you know, because I figured, how could I get people there whenever I wanted to? But the mannequin was something you could lay down. It was as weird as it was. I had these mannequins and I would pose them and, and try to and, and do all this because I had to at least had some level of competence and I could go back and load those pictures on my on my computer and say, oh, this didn't work right or I have to move a light over here and just do it, do it, do it till I was like, okay, this looks like it w- was semi-okay. Was there any kind of routines or any, how did you, from that beginning part, was there anything that you special that you did to make sure that you were okay? Yeah, I mean, gosh, before, like you said, Pinterest and YouTube and all that, um, my thing was collecting Victoria's Secret magazines and I would buy the Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition mm-hmm. and, and just study, study the them. Yeah, I mean, and it was um, probably weird to other people <laughs> why I had stacks of those. Right. But it was just so fascinating to me. Um, and that was really how you learned. I mean, where else would you get kind of flattering poses like that that would work for a lot of different people and gosh what was the other thing um oh and then they would have a special they started having specials about shooting the sports illustrated swimsuit edition oh, on tv yeah, yeah yeah and it was like oh, on I hbo would, or something yeah. like back then i remember I that i do remember looking like glued to, to that watching. yeah right and yes you know how the photographer interacted with the model what mm. kind of lighting and scrims were they using how, you know, what time of day were they shooting? And I just thought that was the most fascinating thing. Because that's what there was. Yeah. Yeah. So you made the most of that little. Now, do you think that probably little to none of that really applied? Because we're, I wish we were out on beaches. Yeah. And, you know, and, 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 but that's you're right. And that's 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 what there was. And it's interesting how people, you know, were looking for almost anything that they could find to 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 use as a to, to kind of as a learning tool in, yeah. in that regard. So that's 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 interesting that you uh, um, did that. So once you were moving along and, and that business started going and uh, um, I guess did you how did you bring in extra people? Did you have to start advertising at all or was it just more word of mouth that the people started finding you? Thankfully, I haven't had to pay for advertising. Gosh, you know, if any, very little. I mean, I've experimented with a few Facebook ads here and there and not really seen 
success with them, but I just really work on making my client experience amazing and working on getting referrals from those clients. And I still keep in contact with all my wedding vendor friends. You know, I'm still working on building relationships with people in similar industries. So I just really, (laughs) I mean, I don't know if it's like a good thing or a bad thing, but I really keep up those relationships and work on referrals. Um, I still believe in blogging. Uh, Social media is great, but the visibility you get, you know, of course, is going down. Yeah, it certainly is. So that's difficult. But, you know, having Google be my friend and working on, you know, your website presence and the blog and then your referral base and the clients that you have thankfully has kept me going. Yeah. And I was looking at your blog um, a little bit, which I was going to talk to you about. And you're right about something like Instagram now. And I mentioned this before where every boudoir tag is blocked, blocked, Uh, tagging things make no difference. And then again, I think they're going to that whole Facebook mode, what they did with the Facebook pages where they're showing it to fewer fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer people. And I think Instagram, too, is running a little bit out of steam now or you don't get as many people fall there. It's a fatigue. I think there's a certain level of fatigue and then you're playing by their rules, whereas your own website, you know, no one's going to stop you from posting whatever you want on there and writing whatever you want. You can write as much as you want. And the interesting thing I saw on your blog was a lot of like testimonial content from some some clients. And and how do you do you do that? Are you sending them a questionnaire or interviewing them or um um how do you go to to get them to partake in in that uh that part of your business so once their session is done and i do an in-person photo reveal once their images are ready so they come in for their photo reveal they pick out you know the gifts and pictures that they want and so once that's done and their experience with me has kind of come to a close i do send them a questionnaire and just tell them what a great experience I had with them, what, you know, what a pleasure it was getting to know them. And then I send them a questionnaire, just really um, genuinely wanting their feedback on what it is that I can do better. If anything, you know, what did they see differently about themselves, like a before and after what led them into my studio and the questions just kind of trickle down from there into their experience and into a sort of review format. So um, why were they interested in coming in for a session? How did they feel before coming in? You know, how did they see So you're giving them a questionnaire. You're Mm -hmm. giving them a questionnaire or at least certain questions and looking for feedback on on that. Is it in person or are you emailing that to them or they do? It goes out in an email email. um, just a few days after they've come in for their photo reveal. And then once they submit that, I kind of put it together in paragraph format and just say, hey, thank you so much for filling this out. I really appreciate, you know, hearing your feedback on your session. This is something I would love to share um, online on my website and social media and with my clients. Is it something you're okay with me posting? And 99% of the time they say yes. And then I, um, after that, let them know it would be great if they kind of copied and pasted it, you know, as a Google review or a Facebook review mm-hmm. and kind of ask them to do that afterwards. But yeah, getting the reviews and testimonials has been really helpful. Um, I it's am hard super, to do. I think it's tricky. Mm-hmm, it's not it is. hunting people down. Isn't always that, you know, they're very excited and they want to do it, but you know, people are busy like, oh, I'll do this later. I'll do this later. Um, so it is some work, I think, chasing those people down sometimes, but it's great social proof, um, especially when it's on your website and your blog, because it's so prevalent and people can read through that and say, wow, this looks genuine. And from what I saw, it looks very genuine from what these people have written. And that really, I think, has a big impact on people reading that to say, wow, she looks like this is going to be the place, the place for me. So I think that's a good strategy, but it's tough getting, I think, those reviews. Any, any- yeah, one when- um, thing that is included in that questionnaire is um, their permission for me to use their images. So it's beneficial and important for them to open it and fill it out. And so that is also like a motivation for them to return that questionnaire to me. To you. They have just seen their images, so it's fresh in their mind. Right. Um, you know, their gallery, whether 
um, they've chosen to buy all of them or not, but at least we've gone through them together and they can let me know on that questionnaire. I only want you to use, you know, the anonymous shots. I only want you to use the modest shots. Yes, right. you're free to use everything. So that does help having that. You give them levels. The you give them different levels uh, on there. Does it, and you just say you can use these type, this type, this type, and then they're uh, um, they're okay with the, they offer you a certain level of photo that they can exactly. Use. Yeah, as easy as you can make it for them filling that any questionnaire out, the better. So they're pretty good about returning that. Um, cause I do try and just give them quick categories and then quick review statements, um, to fill out as far as what their experience was like with me. And so that's really helpful. Yeah, that's a good, that's a, that's a good, um, um, system to use. Reviews are, are a very powerful tool. And then blogging is very underestimated and the trade-off there is it's a lot of work mm, you know yes. besides doing the pictures and doing this and running your day you have to allocate that time whether it's once a week or once a month or whatever and it takes a long time to write yeah. things and, and put that together so people and i'm guilty of that as well easily that just gets pushed to the bottom of the uh of the pile but it is a good tool and you just have to stick with it and keyword blogging and people can find you and it, and it just is really a bonus for for anybody to do that because no one's going to come along and suddenly say oh you can't post this or you know this is not uh uh friendly for our community this type of so you could put whatever you want on there and no one's going to tell you it's your content and and you own it on like an instagram or or a facebook which uh constantly just is fewer and fewer uh, they let uh, fewer and fewer like kind of a, a, a range of content. It seems they're really narrowing it down the things that they'll they'll uh, post. And actually, as a funny story, just this this weekend now, I guess they're all using like artificial intelligence to scan to scan photos. And I was posting an Instagram story, and it was just I was sitting at my desk here, and I had one of my galleries open, and I was scrolling through it, and I was doing something. Wow, look at all the, the photos I've been working on. It was just my own photo scrolling, and I'm trying, and I put some music behind it. And I was trying to post the video, and then I noticed I get this red exclamation point, like this is all copywritten material. You cannot post this on on Instagram. I'm like, this is wow. my own. This is my own like galleries, and it's. I guess they're trying to guess now what you know you're doing, and it just blocked me. It wouldn't even let me post my own. Uh, and you know, it says if you want to, uh, uh, I forget what I'm trying to say. That if you want to like uh, say say this was incorrect, you can file this claim against this. I'm like, I'm just as an Instagram story. I'm not filing a claim against my own material. So I think it's just going to get harder, um, especially for like boudoir type photographers especially. to get their content on there and i also notice pinterest is dead when it comes to boudoir and uh i used to get like literally thousands of people from pinterest i was an avid poster and they've hidden anything with boudoir on from search results it's all gone like if you go to a person and like if you have it and i find you by your name you'll see the photos under there but they do not show up in in like feeds or anything anymore or hashtag. So my traffic from Pinterest literally went to zero wow. uh, over like the past two years. So they're just really cutting down. And I don't think it's a person sitting in a room doing that, but it's just they're programming these computers to say, all right, this is a woman. She has no clothes on. No one can see this, you know, and they really like it's going to be tougher to kind of uh, uh, bring people in from these other websites. So I think photographers have to really do their own work on their own on their own turf yeah. that way no one can stop I mean, them from from doing I wouldn't that. be surprised if we see you know resurgence in the whole blogging world come back mm. around because people are going to get frustrated that somebody's controlling what it is that they see um, and then businesses are already getting frustrated with that choosing who can see their their work especially with our photographers with you know us being limited to what we're even allowed to post so I do think blogging is really important. Um, you may not think it's super relevant right now, but I know that, um, I mean, I ask every single one of my clients how it is that they found me and it's either referral or Google. Google. And so yeah, I know and it's, yeah. that it's working. It's important. And then they find you in that way. And then I know you mentioned too, um, in the email that you sent me that you don't even post a lot of gallery photos on your website. And I looked through it too, and you may have a dozen, maybe there's 10 on there. Mm -hmm. And what's your, what's your uh, thoughts behind that? Or what was the, uh, the reason why you kind of uh, really pared that down? 
So I am probably the most conservative boudoir photographer out there as far as um, just my philosophy and my thoughts on sharing my images. Mm. I, um, in general, am a super conservative person um, and just think that those types of images are really special and important to my client and just have a feeling about the wrong person seeing those images. You know, the internet is great for some things, but not everything. And it's kind of scary to me where those images might go, who can see them. So I do not share or don't even make like client galleries um, to send to clients. Everything is done in my studio. They're given a thumb drive, you know, they're getting a physical copy of their image, what have you. Um, So I don't know. I just have like this, gut um just for it was more of a personal decision that, yeah, wasn't it's that a something personal happened decision. it was just nope. that you want to keep this this private it's a personal and, and decision not, i mm. wouldn't want my own images out there um and i do have clients who let me share their images of course i've shot models yeah. for portfolio building and whatnot and mm. i just choose to share the more conservative images um And it is a huge challenge for me, but I take it as a challenge. And let's, let's see if I can do this, you know, sharing more of me, you know, people are booking me because of the way that I make them feel for the experience that they get with me. So I do have to work to build that trust and put a lot of myself out there, which I think, um, a lot of boudoir photographers have to do, you know, because especially if you're booking a male, you know, do I like him? Do I trust him? Am I okay with going to his studio? Um, and so that's just a personal decision that I made. And it's work. Yeah. It's work. Yeah. Now yeah. I don't know whether it was, and you mentioned too, that was a bit more of a conservative area. So I was just curious if you had some yeah, negative feedback the Bible belt uh, down here. <laughs> from the, from the community. Well, the, the one thing, and I don't know how it's affected you uh, or people down South. Again, I'm in the, in the, the, the epicenter of, of evil up here close to, uh, <laughs> to New York and almost anything goes, but uh you know, I, I, I just found, too, that, you know, there's been such a change. It's talking about Instagram and stuff where it used to be like people, oh, my God, you see me in a bra. That's like the end of the world. But now there's women. And I always say even in the sessions when they're with me, like with their fo- taking pictures. And yes, just Saturday or Sunday, with her, she's taking her own selfies and, and, and sharing them in the middle of, of the session. So I think it's somewhat less of a, of a thing now to, to see that. And, and it's more open. That's in a way. But in this area, like I said, and it can vary from, I guess, from part to part of, of around the country. Is it still a little bit taboo? Or is it something that uh, that people don't want to talk about in that area? Or, or what's your feeling on on that? Do you yeah, have your customers live streaming themselves? Dana, are yeah, they live streaming no. themselves? In the- no, I mean, people do not want others to know necessarily that they've done a session. Like when I say I get a lot of referrals, they are picking and choosing, you know, who they tell. Um, but it is definitely still a, still a little bit area. Private, I apparently. don't necessarily yeah. tell everybody what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, I pick and choose. You know who I openly tell. A lot of people just leading a secret evil life. You are leading us. Oh my goodness! Little do they know what's happening inside of that house. I know all my neighbors. You know I'm up here. They're whispering. They're looking. They're looking through their curtains, going, "Oh my god, what's she doing in that house?" These women coming and going. Oh my god. Yeah, I I can get it. Yeah, and how there are completely different uh, uh, philosophies uh, from section to section in this in this country, and what really is not a big thing in one part of the country and the other part can be a little bit more scandalous and which makes it tougher, you know, uh, for people because you want to promote your business, but you have to operate within sort of the bounds and the mores of that, of that area. And who though are your clients? What would you say? Who are the people that are, are, are coming to see? Are they younger or older or what kind of client mix do you have? Walking yeah. Through the door? So I have about two main people who are coming to see me. So they're fairly young brides, I would say like 25 to 30, early 30s, Mm. who are definitely doing it for their wedding. Um, And so I get a lot of those young brides. And then which it's funny, because my wedding client is definitely my boudoir client in that way. So really nothing about that has changed. It's still the same girl, very similar, uh, to me, I would say 
we get along really well. I just know how to communicate and kind of interact with them and make them feel comfortable. And then the other client is usually, I would say a young mom, you know, 35 to 40, um, just trying to get back, trying to get herself back, trying to get back into um, her life with maybe this new body and these, you know, kids that she's now having to take care of and trying to just do more things for her this stage in her life. So that has been really fun because now I'm in that stage where I wasn't before. And so it's been really nice to be able to relate to them more and know what it is they're going through. Um, And I just love being able to get to help them because I know from experience, (laughs) that's something that I would definitely need and want at this point. Yeah. And it's tough. And especially as, as, I think, well, it's all a lot of women, but as they get older, I think people get a little bit more self-conscious and, um, you know, it it can help on, on that front, having that connection with somebody. And yes, I understand. And we handle this this way or handle this that way. And so how do you deal with people who are really have concerns about their body and, but still want to do a, a photo shoot? I think from them seeing my images, so when I start talking to somebody, I do send them a full gallery so that they're able to get a true idea of my work. And I think from that, plus, you know, the testimonials they've seen from other people kind of puts them at ease and to let them know that they can wear anything that makes them feel comfortable, anything that makes them feel beautiful. It can be a sweater, a sundress, jeans, a kimono, the bed sheets, I mean, whatever. So, and they can cover up to their comfort level. You know, not every single client has to wear the same has thing, to be out do there. the same yeah. poses. Mm. So we try and make the experience custom for each person. What are they comfortable with showing? What have they gone through in their life? What are they trying to get out of the session? You know, what types of outfits, you know, do they see themselves in? And I do ask them in like a little pre-session questionnaire what do they love about their body? You know, what are some things they're looking forward to showing off? What are they wanting to get out of the session? How do they see themselves in the session? Like what words do they use? Like, is it sexy? Is it girl next door? Is it vixen? Is it bombshell? Is it um, beautiful mother four? I mean, it could be anything. Mm. So that definitely helps too. Are the people you think your your clients are fairly conservative too? Does anybody really walk in there and, and say to you, uh, Dana, guess what? That's where we're going today. And you're like, oh my goodness. Or or is it pretty much all kind of, you know, exactly where that, that session's going to go and they're all doing looking to do things that are a little bit more standard boudoir-ish? Yeah, I think they're pretty standard. I mean, I think when you look at boudoir photographers as a whole, my client is probably a little bit more conservative. Um, I don't know. I mean, you, and I would say conservative, like, as a person, their images come out beautiful, and sometimes I'm super surprised at the outfits mm-hmm. that they bring in and the poses yeah. and things they're wanting to do. And so it's fun to get people who are uh, not stuck in that box, even though we kind of are in the area that we're in. And so it's fun. I think that's what makes it even more fun, actually, is getting those girls in here and for them, this is totally outside of their comfort zone. What they do on any, they don't, would never consider doing anything like that. And you're exactly. you're right. And that's a big misconception, I think, about what we do is it's not necessarily about people just taking everything off. I don't think that necessarily makes it better. Yeah, um, I agree. Me personally, like I'd rather keep people white shirts on and stuff. You yeah, know, button down blouses. Man, and I and love a bed sheet. <laughs> you know, prettier. I think you get more mileage uh, from that, and those 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 photos tend to work out better in in the long run. But I think people do sometimes think that wow, this is just gonna, everything's going to be out there, and that's that's not necessarily the case. So I think sticking with that middle ground is is much better long term. That's where most people live anyway. There's fewer people on the fringes, and so you know, sticking there in that middle ground, people have a a, a better level of comfort coming in and explaining to them, no, you don't have to take everything off. We're not going to be doing things that you don't want. To to do, but I noticed definitely up here again in, in the past 10 years, there has been a hard veer to doing things that are more 
uh, risque or things that I would have never photographed like 10 years ago. I would have been like, yeah, no, that's something that, that I don't do. And I think that's a function of maybe social media, you know, more common now people seeing this online or, or a big thing I noticed, like, I don't remember how many years this ago was like the 50 shades of gray, mm. uh, things like that can really put a, 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 a an impact on, on the culture where a lot of women maybe would never think of doing that, but then they see this in the movie and then they kind of say, all right, well, maybe if she's doing it, I can do it too. Um, so I think that there are sometimes social movies and stuff that can have impacts. And I see definitely spurts where certain poses uh, come in and I'm like, where'd you see that? And, you know, it's, it was in a movie or, or, or a TV show that people see these things and that can spur in little, little changes. But I think keeping it cute and simple is the... Uh, um, is the best way to go. But uh, it seems like your people are happy. It seems like they, they enjoy your work. Your pictures are very nice. Everything Thank is very nice you. on your I, on your, on your your website. So I know it's a lot of hard work to do that. And yeah. I see also a lot of yours are like before and afters. Uh, yeah. Most of your pictures are, are before and after. That's a lot of work to do too. And a lot of these women, do they want themselves? Don't make up no hair, taking pictures. Like, that's not how I look every day. <laughs> I yep, do yep. get approval on those, yes, because... Yeah, I would want to be asked and think real hard about having myself out there with no hair yeah, makeup, but yeah, yeah. they are very gracious. They're okay with that? Yeah, my clients are just, you know, any uh, that uh, they're just anything you want, Dana, anything is fine. So they're super gracious to me about that. The, um, they, they come walking out. I always tell people to come up with no makeup. They're like, no, follow yeah. this face. <laughs> well, like I don't this. know. Maybe it's a cultural thing. Like we're in a beach yeah. town. It's super relaxed. So we don't do a lot of hair makeup here as it is. You know, so I think that that helps. But I do, to your point about um, not like showing more or cl- or photographers that show more. I I remember feeling starting out that less was going to be more. Like I felt yeah. like, oh, they need to be super racy, super sexy, yeah. and that's just what they were coming to me for, kind of thing. Right. And have learned over time that. God, yeah, I would just wrap you up in a bed sheet and just to see, you know, the muscles in your back and that kind of thing would be way better than um, showing it all out there. Yeah. yeah. And that's true. And it's more the quality too, and the experience um, where the really the bottom line of it is if you can make it a good experience for the women from beginning to end. And it's, you know, people don't do that every single day. So it's new and exciting for them. But the result in the end is always what justifies the whole the whole process. But I think if you could, if you have that knack to make women look pretty and beautiful, uh, you know, they don't have to necessarily be all out there. I could do cute portraits all day of women in t shirt and jeans, and mm. they're going to love it, you know. Um, but if you're just a horrible photographer, it doesn't matter what you're photographing someone in, it's not going to look good. It's, it's not going to so look true. good. So you're, you're 100% on track there that uh, you don't have to force people down that road. And I always struggled a little bit again as, as being a guy. I was always very self conscious. I didn't want to feel like I was pushing people to go too far. Like, ah, you're here with me. Now take this off, take this off. So I always mm-hmm. erred more on the side of being super, super cautious rather than, and then I actually had a point where women were telling me, you know, I, I kind of wanted to do something a little wilder. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, I, they, I was getting that kind of pushback. So I'm like, all right. So I had to like give people that, that option um, in my sessions and not everybody wants to go in that direction, but s- some women do want to push things a little bit further and that's okay. And and I think what I've learned is that they're happy with it and they had a great time. And who am I to tell one person to do this and, or another person uh, um, not to. So it's a little bit of finding your own way and, and uh, a comfort level and what you're comfortable doing and, and not pushing too hard. And also I think at the same time, not keeping people from doing what they want to do. It's a little bit of a, of a learning process. Yeah. You kind of have to feel them out and get to know that person and see what's going to work really well for them. Because you do, you learn like, oh, um, uh, you know, after seeing their images and you may hear comments at some point of, oh, I could have done more because it feels mm-hmm. vulnerable in the moment. Yeah. And they feel mm-hmm. like they don't have anything on. But we know looking at the image that it's probably a very conservative image. And so I have, you do have to find that balance of pushing them a little bit outside of their comfort zone because you know they'll love the end result better. And so that's just, you know, having learned that over time is like 
getting to know them, what they're comfortable with, pushing them just a little bit, you know, mm. but not too far. I give them that experience. Yeah. I like to have people a little bit nervous. That's yeah. part of the ride, I think. Not like too much, but just yeah. keeping them a little bit like, ooh, this is like a roller coaster, something because new. Because you know now as a the professional, exciting. they're going to love yeah. that in the end. And I mm. hate, mm. I don't want people um, being at the end of their session or then seeing their images and go, oh, I really wish I had done X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Oh, so I how really do you handle I- that? Yeah, that's a good question that, or a good uh, t- thing that you brought up there because there, there's no going back, you know, so like there's no like we go, oh, we can go back and, and, and do this again. So uh, how do you know? Like and, and I always push this up where I and, and hear a lot of women now will do things that are just like like topless again or just covering a like, mm-hmm. shirt or using their hands. Mm-hmm. And I'm more or less, you know, and you could, I, it's very weird to, to, I'm like, do you want to do a lot of stuff like that? And I'm like, if you don't like it, you don't have to use it, but you know, we're here, we're not going back and, and, and doing it again. Do you ever find yourself in that situation where you got to like push people just a little bit and then like, Oh yeah, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah. I think at the beginning there were only a couple of times where someone saw their images and was like, They'll just say things like, oh, those aren't that bad, or oh, those weren't as, you know, risque as it felt in the moment. Um, Mm. And so you kind of say, yeah, well, I guess you need to come in again, and we can, Mm -hmm. you know, you're more confident, you're more comfortable, we can do Mm. some more fun stuff this time and take it in a whole new direction. But, um, you know, it it was, they weren't that big of a deal. They love their images, of course, um, and that was just something that, I kept in the back of my mind thinking, I don't want more people to walk away feeling like that. So you do feel them out throughout the session and again, push them where you think that you can. And I always remind them it feels super vulnerable. I know that it does. And then if I can show them the back of the camera, I will. And then I'll say, well, let's say the super revealing stuff that you might want to try at the end, because you're going to feel way more confident at that point. Right, right. You're going to know me a little bit better. You're going to realize you're just having fun. I'm going to show you mm-hmm. some images on the back of the camera. And then you're going to be ready to do, you know, the nude, semi-nude stuff at the end. I promise these are everybody's favorites. You're going to love them. And like you said, if you don't, you don't have to buy them. Like if you see them when you come back, then nobody will know that they even existed. But yeah, and that's that's the right strategy there and 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 pushing them a little bit there, I think. And you're right. And then they see this and they're glad that they uh, um, glad that they did it ultimately. And uh, and they're happier. But that's a that's a struggle in learning how far to push mm-hmm. or not to push. And mm-hmm. and, you know, sometimes you have to give that little bit of nudge and they're like, no, no, no. And then they're like, oh, I'm so glad you did that. And yeah. it works out. Uh, yeah. And I always say really. these end up being everybody's favorites. I promise. That's right. They always are. These are the ones. Just- that's right. You just learn through experience and, you know, try and be the expert and comforter to them because they really are there to trust you and for you to do what it is that you do. Yep. And that only comes through experience and, and doing it 8,000 times. Exactly. And I guess knowing what you can push. And and you've been here a long, long time. We, were, we talked for a while. And I'm just going to ask you one or two more things. Like if you were saying someone was getting started in boudoir, or if you had to go back now and get started again, what is like one piece of advice you think you'd give yourself to that you, you know, now that you wish you would have known back when you were first starting? Um, I think just to trust myself and my gut a little bit more. I mean, I don't regret the process that I went through. I don't regret, you know, doing everything that I did because I gained so much experience and took so many good things with me along the way to be where I am now. But I think just to take that leap, even though it feels really scary. um, Yeah, I don't know, because I don't have too many regrets, but just to trust your gut and to learn, learn, learn. Like I gleaned as much as I could, took as many classes as I could. um, And don't be afraid to pay for things. You know, I regret not getting maybe a more professional website off the bat. Um, and I have paid for mentorship, which I don't regret whatsoever. You know, I have paid for online classes, um, paid to travel, to go to workshops. And those are invaluable. Yeah. Don't forget, invest in yourself. So that way it'll pay off down. Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, it's all learning. It's all education. It's only going to help you get there a little bit faster, you know, do your job a little bit better, 
And it's, if you look at it as like paying to go to college, you know, to get a degree, it's sort of the same thing. You're investing in yourself, in your education, in your business, and that is going to take you a lot further. And I'm so glad I did those things. Yep. And it'll pay off in the, uh, in the long run. It all pays, uh, it all pays off. Words of wisdom. from <laughs> I try. And then before we go here, just one last thing. Um, where can everybody find your, or where can they find your website or where can they find you online if they wanted to peek at your, take a peek at your work? To peek at my minimal work online. Your, your minimal <laughs> galleries. Yeah. So my website is Dana Layman Photography and it's spelled L-A-Y-M-O-N. And then on Instagram, it's just at Dana Layman. And then Facebook is Dana Layman Photography. And yeah, that's about everywhere. That's it. Yeah. Now you're a new trendsetter, which are minimal galleries. Now people are going to be going, hmm, now I have to copy what Dana's doing. She's very, so very secretive. They're, Maybe that was my they're, plan all along. They're going to out, they're going to out on gallery. They're just, I'm just going to have two photos on my gallery. Just uh, two. And they're going to be women all the way covered. And like, Dana, you think you could do it? I could do better than you. <laughs> they probably could. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much for, um, um, for coming out today. It was nice to meet you. It was nice talking to you. Thank you. And, you too. uh, continued success and uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, talk to me today. Thank you. I appreciate it.